Hello and welcome to Straight Line Graphs. Um, we're going to start by looking at how to draw straight line graphs, especially with the three methods. We're going to have a look at the table method, the dual intercept method and the gradient method. All right, so the first thing is we're going to have a look at the table method. So if you give me, or if they've given you an equation, y is equal to 2x plus 3, and they ask you to draw the following equation, um, or um, straight line, then you say, um, all right, we're going to do that by means of a table. Then you choose some x values. You're going to replace x with negative 1, 0, 1. You can choose any numbers. We normally choose the numbers that's around the origin so that we have um, our picture as close to the origin as possible. So um, you can choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. You can choose negative 5, negative 2, 0, 2, 5. It doesn't matter. Um, you just have to have um, more than one coordinate so that you can draw your straight line. Okay, first things first, you're going to replace, replace that x's value there with negative 1. And if you do so, you're going to get y is equal to 2 times negative 1, which gives you negative 2, plus 3, which gives you an answer of 1. So my first coordinate that I can plot now for certain is, is x is negative 1 and y is 1. So my coordinate is negative 1, 1. Then I'm going to replace the x with a 0. If I do so, I get y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 3. So y is equal to 3 when x is 0. And that is why we always say the back side of our equation, y is equal to 2x plus 3, that plus 3 is the y-intercept. Because that will always be where all the x's have been taken away, which makes it 0. Okay, so um, if x is 0, it always gives you the last bit of your equation, which is the y-intercept. Then if we replace 1 in there, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 gives you a coordinate of 1, 5. All right, let's quickly have a look at our Cartesian plane. If I go and plot negative 1, 1, it will be over there. X is negative 1, Y is 1, 0, 3 over there, and 1 and 5 over there. And voila, you just um, connect and extend. Remember, please, to extend your graph don't just join, join it from the first dot to the last dot. You extend it all throughout because that graph continues until infinity and uh, to positive infinity and negative infinity. All right, please get used to the way um, in grade 10 we introduce f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. But what that means is f of x is just y. So if you ever see f of x, g of x, it's just to name that graph that Right, let's quickly have a look at the um, drawing straight line graphs using the gradient intercept method. So the gradient intercept method is mostly when you are given a grid that you can work with. Um, you don't always have to have a grid, but it's more accurate, I think, and um, less chance of making a mistake if you use um, a grid. Okay, so the gradient inter intercept method, very quick, very easy to use. Also, um, after you've drawn it, maybe using the table method or the dual intercept method, easy to check yourself with the gradient intercept method. Okay, let's have a look. So I've started using g of x. Remember, that just means y is equal to 3x minus 2, but that graph's name is graph g. Okay, so g of x is equal to 3x minus 2. All right, so what happens is that back side there, that negative 2, that is your y-intercept. So remember, if you make x 0, 3 times 0, so this whole part falls away always, and that would be your y-intercept. So that is the first part where you start. So on your y-axis, where it's negative 2, you're going to plot that negative 2 over there. All right, so then... We know that the gradient, that's the gradient in front of the x, is the gradient. Remember, if it's got a positive gradient, it's going to incline, it's going to go straight up, it's going to go up. And if it's got a negative gradient, it's going to go down. Okay, because it's got a positive gradient, I always say we go write that 3 as a fraction. What would 3 be if you force it into a fraction? 3 over 1. So we're going to go 3 up. And one across and I'll give you now a way how to remember that so from your starting point from that y intercept that negative 2 you start there and then if you had to put the gradient there um, into a fraction it would be 3 over 1 
So it's three up and one across because it has to be an increasing graph because the gradient is a positive. Okay, and then you join your lines just like that. Remember, you only need two dots or you only need two coordinates to join, uh, um, to, join to draw a straight line. And that is g of x. I'm going to call it like that. Okay, let's do another one as an example. h of x. So h of x, so y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. So what we notice here is that it's going to be a decreasing graph because my gradient is a negative 2. Where's my starting point? Remember, if I make x 0, negative 2 times 0, this whole part falls away. And what is left? y is equal to a positive 3 when x is 0. So when x is 0, y is going to be a positive 3. And there's the dot. So that's our starting point. So you start with a y-intercept here at the back. And then because it's a negative gradient, we're going to sink over swim. So how I always remember it, if it's a positive 3, it's rise with 3, run with 1. It's always up and to the right. If it's a negative gradient, it's sink over swim, down and to the right. So it depends on whether you're going to go up or whether you're going to go down. So a negative, if you had to force that negative 2 into a fraction, it would be negative 2 over 1. So you're going to go down with 2 and 1 across. Okay, sink with 2 and swim with 1. Let's look at the yellow graph again, g of x. We started at negative 2 and we rose with 3 and we ran with 1. So rise over run. Blue one, because it's a negative gradient, we're going to sink. Sorry, we're going to sink 2 and swim with 1. Negative 2 over 1. So our next little dot's going to be there and um, our coordinates. And we're going to draw it and extend and I'm going to call it h of x. Okay, so very important to remember, if it is a positive gradient, like with a yellow graph, we're going to use rise over run. Always rise is up and run to the right. If it is a negative gradient, we're going to sink, sink so which means we're going to go down and to the right. Okay, and that is how you get your two coordinates. You plot them and you um, connect and extend. Just very important, that point over there where the yellow graph and the blue graph meet each other, they cut each other, that is what we call the point of intersection. It's the way the two graphs cut each other. So now over here, we can read it off as 1, 1. Okay. But how you would calculate it, if I had to ask you, what is the point of intersection without drawing it? What is the point of intersection of g of, uh, g of x and h of x? Then you would say, all right, it's where the two meet each other. It's where the two are equal to each other. So because they are both equal to y, you can equal them to each other. Okay, so 3x minus 2 is equal to negative 2x plus 3. And through doing that, you can see that you only have one variable missing. And you can find, um, through the inverse operation, you throw over that negative 2x, it becomes a positive 2x, which will give you 5x is equal to 3, uh, sorry, to 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. So x is equal to 1. Can you see that it's the same as what we've got there? But how do you get the y then? You take that x as 1, and you go and replace it into which formula? Any formula. The yellow one, if you want to. The blue one, yes, you can. Any one. So you, I went and I chose it to um, replace it into g of x, graph g of x, and I said y is equal to 3x minus 2. So the x I replaced there with a 1, and y is equal to 3 times 1, which is 3 minus 2, which also gives me 1. And voila, I can also work it out mathematically by equaling them to each other to give me the same coordinate as what I've read it off, off the graph, which is 1, 1. All right, the last method and the second last slide is we're going to have a look at the dual intercept method. All right, if I give you f of x is equal to 2x plus 4, remember f of x is the same as saying y is equal to 2x plus 4. Okay, now with the dual intercept method, remember dual is 2. We only get two points. You only need two points to draw a line, an accurate line. Um, and the first point we have already um, is... 
I just rewrote it, is that positive 4 at the back. That back side is your y-intercept. So if x is 0, y would be 4. Okay, so we already have one point. So let's go and plot that point there, smack bam there on the y-axis, x is 4. So we already have one coordinate. So we only need one other coordinate to find the straight line. And I'm going to do that by saying for x, let y be equal to 0. Okay, just to quickly explain that, on the x, if you draw a straight line here, let's just cut through there like that. You will see that that graph or that straight line cuts somewhere through the x-axis and it cuts somewhere through the y-axis. So over there and over there. Okay, any straight line, even if I draw it down with a negative gradient, there and there. So my straight line will always cut through um, the y-axis and the x-axis. So on that point, if it crosses through the x-axis, the y is going to be 0. And if I cut there on the y-axis, my x is going to be what? Not 1, 2, 3, no, 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 not negative 2, not 0. So at some point, um, except for our two special graphs, which we'll just look at after this, um, so we'll, we'll always be where the 1 is 0, what would the other one be? And if y is 0, what would x be? And if x is 0, what would y be? So we are already, without you even knowing it, we replace that 2 with the 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So y is equal to 4. So if x is 0, y is equal to 4. And now I'm just going to do it the other way around. What if for x, I let y be equal to 0? So I make that y is 0 is equal to 2x plus 4. Take that positive 4 over to negative 4. Divide by 2 on each side. And x would give me negative 2. So if y is 0, if y is 0, x would be negative 2. Okay, and there's my other dot coming in there. So we've got our two dots, dual intercept, two dots, two coordinates. We connect and extend, and I'm going to call him f of x. All right, the last one uh, slide with the straight line graphs is a few special lines and interesting things to note regarding the gradient of two lines. Um, so let's just get into that. I'm going to bring up my Cartesian plane. All right, you get two special lines. The, the first one is y is equal to 4, y is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1, negative 2. All right, so that, um, if you have a look at the original, um, I always call it the cookie cutter mold, y is equal to mx plus c, you will see that this line has no gradient. The gradient is 0, so y is equal to mx that m is 0. 0 times x is 0. So that middle part has fallen away. Uh, fallen away. So just y is equal to 4. And very, very easy. You just go to the y where the y is 4 and you draw a horizontal line there. So can you see if you had to walk uh, across this line? Can you walk across this line? Yes, I can. Is it any effort? No, because I'm not going up. I'm not going down. It, ha it has no gradient. The gradient is 0. Another special line is if we have a look at x is equal to negative 3. Very easy. Where is x negative 3 there? And it's going to um, form a vertical line going up like that. And that is x is equal to negative 3. So as you can see, the gradient here is undefined. So if I was walking along this x-axis over here, walking, 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 you can't all of a sudden start walking straight up. That is impossible. So um, we always say the gradient is undefined for this um, vertical line over here. If I had to say x is 2, then you just go to where the 2 is and you draw your line over there. Okay, let's quickly have a look at um, just the um, interesting things to note about the gradients. If I give you these two equations, y is equal to 2x plus 3 and y is equal to 2x minus 1. So what we note is that the gradient is the same for both of them. They are both positive and they both have a gradient of 2, a positive 2. So let's quickly go and draw. Let's use the um, gradient intercept method. Very easy. I've got a grid. Where's my starting point? A positive 3 with the y. So over there, and then my gradient is a positive 2, so I'm going to rise over run. So it's going to be 
2 up, 2 if you had to force it in a fraction, 2 over 1. So it's rise with 2 and run with 1. Okay, 2 up and 1 across, and there's your line, y is equal to 2x plus 3. Let's quickly draw the second one over here. Your starting point, your y-intercept, is negative 1, as indicated there. And then again, I'm going to rise with 2, run with 1. If I had to force 2 into a fraction, 2 over 1, rise with 2, run with 1. So from that dot over there, rise with 2, run with 1, and there would be my second dot. And if I had to join them there, you will see that those two lines are parallel. They're running the same distance apart from the one end to the other. So we can conclude that if two straight line graphs have the same gradient, we know that they will run parallel to each other, regardless of the y-intercept. It doesn't matter. So that graph just gets pushed up or down, but it will always stay parallel to the other one. Let's have a look at this graph, and I want us to draw it first before we can draw a conclusion. So my starting point using the gradient intercept method is negative 1. It's the same as that one, so I've just pushed it over there. Then, now because it's a negative gradient, we're going to sink and swim. So how many are we going to sink with? 1, and we're going to swim with 2 units. So sink with 1, swim with 2, and then our other dot, which should be there. Okay, we're going to draw an extend, and then I'm just going to write it down there, y is equal to a negative a half x minus 1. Now, what do you note about these two graphs, um, or even the three graphs, if you compare them, um, especially re in regards to their gradients? Can you see that they meet each other, or they meet the others perpendicularly? Okay, so um, if two graphs are perpendicular to each other, we can say that the two gradients multiplied together will always give you negative one. Now, this seems ridiculous or quite, or you know, um, uh, hard to remember or hard to understand. But basically, what you do is you take that number, force it into a fraction, which makes it two over one. So two over one, flip it around and becomes a half, and you change the sign. So you flip it around and you change the sign. And that is how you would get um, a line that is perpendicular to another line uh, with regards to the gradient. So let's just think a little bit. If I had to give you y is equal to a third x, y is equal to a third x, what line would run parallel to that one? So you take the gradient, which was given as a third, you flip it around will become 3 over 1 and you change the sign. So the gradient of that line should then be negative 3. All right, I hope that makes sense and I hope you understand straight lines a little bit more and um, there will be a video to follow on this one where we look at how to find the equation when you are given a gradient and a coordinate and how to find the equation when you are given two coordinates. Okay, hope you will have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.